So about three years ago, I had been with my girlfriend at the time in an American Ninja Warrior training gym. A friend was having a very creative birthday and a launch party, and as my girlfriend has was jumping off these monkey bars, she actually jumped onto a platform weird and instantly broke her ankle. And it was a pretty severe fracture. And when we went to the hospital that night, one thing really struck me, and it's something I hear a lot from patients now about the modern medical system. And it was that the physician was really pressuring my girlfriend into doing a procedure or a surgery right away. And any discussion other than what he was recommending was met with a lot of pressure, resistance, and even fear. So you will never heal or walk again unless you do this surgery right now. Now, I find this a lot. Many of my patients so far have commented that the thing they don't like the most about the modern medical system is the way physicians pressure patients into doing procedures or things like that out of fear and are not open-minded about going to see another physician, whether conventional or alternative, or adjunct care, and it leaves a very bitter taste in the mind of the patient. But in this video, I want to share what I think is really a much bigger problem in the field of medicine and some ideas for how we can overcome it. Hey, I'm Alex Hine, author of the book, Master the Day, current doctoral student in traditional or classical Chinese medicine. Now, I've included the first link in the description there is a free download for a PDF on five ways to add 10 years to your life with classical Chinese medicine. There's some pretty cool exercises there you can check out. The first link right there in the description. So the first thing that I've noticed is the problem of the modern physician acting more like God than a highly educated expert that can give one piece of advice. And I think the big issue with this is not that a physician is not an expert, but really the entire mindset of a person, let's just use cancer because that's the emperor of all maladies in this era in history. People come in and they're afraid. They're scared. They don't know what to do. They don't know what their chances are. They don't know what the protocol is going to be for treating their illness. And they're vulnerable. And a person comes in who supposedly, the physician comes in, who supposedly has the patient's best interests at mind. And they don't say, you know, rather than being like, I know you're afraid. This is how we typically treat it. This is how it usually goes. I understand if you want a second opinion, here's a great colleague of mine you can check out. Also, if you do want to work with other forms of therapy, I'm happy to work together, but we really should do this. Rather than doing that, what comes up so often is that many physicians will almost threaten the patient and say, you have to do this or you'll die. You have a 10% chance of being healed. You should do this, and even though there's an 8% chance of survival for your colon cancer, you should still do this aggressive the chemotherapy. And overwhelmingly, when a person comes in, they're vulnerable, they're afraid, rather than the physician being a reassuring presence that I don't know how you'll do, but we're going to try our best, they're instilling the most poisonous, toxic, disease-inducing belief structure, which is fear. The second thing is that fear does not allow a person who is already probably in a state of fight or flight to make a clear, emotionally clear conscious response. So one time, for example, I was crossing a bridge in New York City and I didn't have my wallet on me and I didn't know there was like a $12 ticket. And this was at the peak of rush hour, 5 p.m. on a Friday. I'm crossing the bridge, didn't have my wallet, and then I was like, crap, there's this $12 toll here going over the Tappan Zee Bridge or whatever. And I pull up to the window and I told the woman, I was like, sorry, I forgot my wallet. Can you give me a ticket? And she kind of like huffed and she got angry and she's like, look at the line behind you. And two people started honking just in 10 seconds. I was waiting. They're honking. She's not happy. They're keep honking. She's like, you forgot this. My God, you're giving me a hard time. Look at this line. You're killing me. And I'm, and I'm like, can I pay? Can I pay another way? Can I like, what are you going to send it to my house? You're going to give me a ticket. And it was this weird, high pressure, awkward moment when it could have been super smooth and super clear. Now, I know that doesn't compare to getting a cancer diagnosis and saying we need to begin aggressive treatment immediately. But under the pressure, 
the pressure of the physician or the practitioner and the duress of the stress. When a patient's under duress, they're already not thinking clearly. And this idea of pushing them, pressuring them out of fear to make a decision, this does not, this is not in the spirit of medicine. This is not in the spirit of a healer coming with the best interest of the sick person that I'm going to do my best to help you get better. And I'm an ethical person of integrity. I will do my best. I will be honest. I'll try to communicate that. Sometimes I fail. This is medicine. And I don't see that in so many practitioners. With the amount of negative feedback I get from so many of my patients, the fear and the I'm God, you are wrong, this piece of research you brought to me is valueless. The third big problem is that fear and the desire to be right as I am God, the physician. Fear is the enemy of growth. Because for our profession, for the entire medical profession to grow and evolve, people must be willing to constantly challenge the status quo. The status quo, 75 years ago, physicians and even pregnant women were smoking cigarettes. And 200 years ago, germ theory wasn't even a mainstream practice. In fact, some of the early observers that germs, this theory of germs could be making people die from post-surgical infections, this was considered a form of quackery. So the ability of a person to be confident, stand their ground, challenge the status quo and say, you know what, I don't think that's right. I'm not the physician, I'm the patient, but something feels funny and I don't think it's right. And I'm going to get a second opinion. That is the foundation that medicine stands on to improve in the future for the sick person. And when we're dealing with a physician or practitioner who's so so set on being right or maintaining this is how it's been done, these people are the enemy of growth and the enemy of self-healing in the name of the patient. So I know this is a cliche and it's a stereotype that the physician is the egomaniac God, that this is the word of God. If you don't listen to what I'm saying, you're stupid. But there's some aspect of truth to that. And this is, you know, this is me maybe on my soapbox or public service announcement to remind us that if you are the caretaker, it's your job to make the sick person feel safe. And if you are the patient, at the end of the day, you are your own physician. You are your own best advocate. If something feels off to you intuitively, listen to that and get a second opinion. Make sure you're taking the physician's advice, but always listen to the inner voice. Because when I've studied these cancer remissions that I'll be publishing shortly, one of the overwhelming trends was how often they ignored conventional advice. It doesn't mean they ignored modern medicine or didn't do chemo, but they ignored the specific caretaker's advice and did something else. And that is an undeniable, consistent association that I see. So just a little bit of a medical rant there for the moment. I think it's really important If you're the healer in the healing role, your job is to make the person feel safe, like they're your child, and take care of them. Not to tell them, you do this and you'll die. Do this and you're stupid. Your job is to watch after them. And as the patient, your job is to do everything imaginable to heal and try to figure out who is in your own best interests. So I hope that helps. Again, for me in Chinese medicine, I had a long history of going through the modern medical ringer of a system and before finding someone who could actually solve my problems. All right, guys, time to step off my soapbox. I hope that helps. Of course, you can download the first link in the description. If you click that, you're going to get a free infographic on how to add 10 years to your life with classical Chinese medicine, five cool practices you can do today. And you can also check out my last two videos right there and right there. <music>